Did Intel make a huge mistake getting into the discrete graphics card market? Rumors were already flying this year that their entire art graphics project just cost too much money and was therefore going to be scrapped before a single card even made its way to store shelves. And even though cards did eventually go on sale, Intel is currently only offering mid-range GPUs that can't hope to compete with the heavy hitters from Nvidia and AMD. Now, the general manager of Intel's graphics group, Raja Kaduri, came out and flatly denied that Intel was giving up on its Arc GPU lineup. But without selling those high dollar, high end cards, how is Arc going to survive? Well, there's a good chance it'll survive just fine. You see, graphics cards are actually fairly low margin products. They cost quite a lot to design and manufacture, so the companies that make them aren't actually earning tons of profit. And this is even true at the high end, despite those eye-watering prices. And while having a great high-end card can turn heads and get you mindshare with gamers, the vast majority of gaming rigs out there are using mid-range and budget parts. Just look at the Steam hardware survey if you don't believe me. So Intel figured they should appeal to the broadest swath of the market possible with their lineup of mid-range GPUs. Intel's current highest end offering is the Arc A770, which has an MSRP of $349, slightly less than what the Nvidia RTX 3060 is currently going for. So while the A770 isn't going to give you mind blowing frame rates, it does offer better performance than the 3060 and a good number of modern AAA titles. So if you're one of the many gamers out there without tons of money to burn, but want the best possible experience, Intel thinks it has the right card for you. Of course, this doesn't mean that it is actually the right card, as there are a few hiccups that have already affected Intel out of the gate and could still derail the Arc lineup. We'll tell you what they are right after we thank Linode for sponsoring today's video. Linode is a powerful Linux-based cloud computing service from Akamai that's affordable and easy to use. They have a large marketplace with one-click apps to quickly deploy servers for website development, file hosting, database management, video hosting, or even video game servers. Linode's affordable pricing has no hidden fees and you only pay for what you use. Best of all, Linode has worldwide data centers and 100% human 24-7, 365 customer service that's reachable by phone, email, or social media. So set up your own server today and get $100 60-day credit on your new account at the link below. Poorly written drivers can cripple even the most beefy graphics cards out there. And unsurprisingly, it's one of the biggest teething issues the new ARC cards have had so far. It does make some sense considering how new Intel is to the discrete graphics game, but it's also something that gamers won't have very much patience for regardless. Arc also seems to lag behind with DirectX 11 titles. Now, newer games mostly have DX12 support, which has pushed Arc ahead of Nvidia and AMD in some of those titles, but a crap ton of games use DX11, which may give users pause if they're not planning on exclusively playing bleeding edge games. But Intel does appear to be actively trying to address these issues. A fairly steady stream of fixes has found its way to users, including one that has doubled performance in older titles that use DirectX 9. And while there was also a concern that AIB partners, you know, companies like MSI and ASUS that actually make the cards themselves, might not want to build Intel Arc cards because of concerns over quality control, it looks like Gigabyte has finally taken the plunge, starting out with some products towards the, of course, lower end of the stack. Moving forward, Intel wants to push its value for money position in the market further by improving their upscaling and ray tracing capabilities, as well as making their products power efficient enough to require only one connector. If the next generation of cards called Battle Mage and Celestial feature improved XESS, their answer to DLSS, and are easy to connect to an existing power supply, then perhaps Intel can really start putting pressure on Team Red and Team Green. Man. It's really strange to talk about Intel as an underdog. And it might feel strange, but I wanna thank you for watching this video. Hey, like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you dislike it, check out our other videos, comment below the video suggestions, don't forget to subscribe and follow, check out all videos all the time.